know that. That's how you do it. You go from the outhouse to the penthouse. That's it. That's what they said. <laughs> That's what it is. Seahawks win. Russell Wilson had himself a day. A very strong defensive matchup. But check out those records by two teams in the NFC West. The Seahawks, they win this one 27-24. And here is Jimmy Garoppolo after the game. Kyle, hold your breath. It was a tough fought game. Uh, you know, it's a good team. And so we knew it was going to be a, you know, tough fight and everything. But I thought, uh, I thought our guys battled, you know, up until the end. It was, uh, it was a tough loss. We just had too many self, self-imposed self uh, you know, mistakes, and I think that's that's what hurt us. You know, when you put yourself behind like that, it's hard to catch up. So, uh, you know, just little things we got to clean up. I could throw the ball better. We could catch it better. Uh, I think it's just a little bit of everything. There's not one specific thing that sticks out, but you know, it's a bit of a reality check for us. You know, go back and uh, respond this week. Exciting game. Some calling it the best ever. Russell Wilson himself calling it the craziest game he's ever played. And more on that one, of course. And we know Jimmy G's your dude Love him. always. Yeah. Just round the clock 24 7. That, man. But <laughs> specifically for week 10, I need to know who stood out the most for you guys. Nate, who was that dude? We all assumed that the Chiefs were going to beat up on the Titans. Or at least I did. I could raise my hand honestly okay. and say that they were going to. We got Pat Mahomes back. Mm -hmm. He's going to light up the score. Mm -hmm. But there's no way the Titans. Tyreek. With Ryan Tannehill, they're not going to beat the Chiefs. Jeez, they did. And they did it on the legs of this man. Derrick Henry, oh, he is that dude. My man had a buck 88, two TDs. You know what's crazy about this during the commercial break? I was asking Hamilton, who led in the time possession? He said, well, the Chiefs led in time possession. Hmm. So really, it wasn't that they controlled the ground and controlled the clock, like we say, when it comes to running the ball. It's just the fact when the moments mattered the most, Derrick Henry was able to control the narrative of the game. And what I can appreciate about this, this is around the time of year where Derrick Henry really gets cooking. Go time. Last year, he got busy. And over the second half of the season, he was doing some ridiculous stuff. Derrick Henry, once again, almost 200 yards. He's looking across the field saying, okay, Pat Mahomes, you want to put up 400 yards? I'll do half of that sure. on the ground, and I'll make sure my team gets the win. Derrick Henry is the main reason, the main reason that the Titans won this one. Doesn't it feel like Derrick Henry has, like, one or two of those games every year, and if you're against them in fantasy, you're just like, right. it's just my luck. Do it. It. It doesn't it. matter. Second half. <laughs> I got it. Christian Kirk. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> The Falcons had lost six straight games going into this. They spent the bye week all week long hearing about how Dan Quinn's job could be in jeopardy. And they were also the biggest underdog of any game all season going into New Orleans. So what they do? They went and they beat the Saints. And my dude this week is Dan Quinn. All right. Because, you know, you go from being a Super Bowl coach, a guy who coached in a Super Bowl, won the conference, the hottest thing. Let me tell you something. It gets really lonely on your phone when you are – a loser of six straight games, and they're talking about hot No one wants to text you. No one wants – it's almost like you're a pariah. I don't want to be talking to Dan Quinn because we don't know the future, and it's not as convenient as, hey, coach, great win. I'll tell you what, these guys, they found a way to play for their coach, and they found a way to win. In all of the games that Drew Brees and Sean Payton have played together, in all of them, since 2005 when they got there, they have never scored less than 10 points in a home game. Dan Quinn and that defense held them like to over nine games. points. Yes, Ooh, over 100 games. games. They did the job, and I, I just love the way this team rallied around their coach. I don't know if they'll win another game all season. I almost don't care. I love the fact that they found a way to play for this guy when everyone else was saying, ah, it looks like we're moving on. Nope. Biggest underdog of any game all season long. Dan Quinn gets his guys and motivates them, and they beat the Saints. This just shows how crazy the NFL is. In the year of the upset, the year of the backup quarterback, Dan Quinn and the Falcons found a way. We all love DQ, don't we? We love it. It's good to see that. I don't we love him. He took my power rankings in a blender and yeah, pressed pulverize. We'll get to those, my friend. We will. Uh, we all fell in love with Jamal Adams when he came into the league. Pure charisma, incredible player. But, man, did he need a big game. And, boy, did he get it. He, you know, he gets into the media and compares himself. Uh, Tom Brady, uh, Aaron Donald. And he's not Tom Brady, Aaron Donald. He's Troy Palomalu. Oh, my gosh, the place he made. You saw the touchdown, of course. All that was missing was the hair and the black and gold jersey. Through Saquon to Daniel Jones. Give me that. Goodbye. Wave. You, you don't see a better defensive play from start to finish from a guy who really needed it. And that's not even my favorite play of the day, guys. Not only did he have this one, he did the pure Palomalu uh, theatrics. Palomalu. Watch this. He goes over the top. It's so difficult to time it and to execute it and to stick it. That, that is trademarked Paula Malin action right there. In fact, 
Give me a beautiful side by side. Give me Troy. Okay. Give me Jamal. LSU, USC. Look out, here he comes. Oh, it's so good. It, it's just, there's so few guys who can ever do that, let alone a guy who's drawn a lot of attention to himself on a bad team. Jamal really needed to have it. And just for a quick refresher about Jamal's charisma, how much we like him, let's go back to 2017 oh. when Jamal came to five studios ago and we fell in love with him. Take it away, Jamal. I'm all about changing the culture of that position. Mm. So I want to be different. I don't, I don't want to just be a defensive back that, you know, play for the Jets. I want to I wanna do something that people have never seen. So that's what I'm striving for each and every day. <laughs> Jamal wants to be great, and we love that. And on Sunday, he was. Big respect, Jamal. Go get it. I feel like that's going to end up being your top five plays of the year, that one. You I love think so. that play. I love it. Hey, I'm going to double do down love? on the Jets. No okay. offense here. You know what the back pages here in New York are not talking about? Mm. Sam Darnold, for once. Yes, he was in a bad place. His back against the wall. But I still think that this fan base, this media market, it could have gone two ways after this game against the Giants. Epic match at MetLife, and he made some clutch plays, guys. In the previous three games, he threw three touchdown passes and had eight turnovers. Then he ran one in for a score. He threw one. He looked good. He didn't look, you know, remember the game against the Dolphins where he didn't even run? Try didn't to even get the loose ball. In the yeah. end zone, not okay. So I feel like in this game that meant so much to his fan base, regardless of the record, this has given Jets fans some renewed hope. Him having the maturity and him stepping to the podium and saying something to reporters that he knows he's going to get dragged for. Take a look. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we need every win from now on. Uh, you know, because we still got a chance. I mean, you know, if we get on a roll here and we, we win out, uh, we got a chance at the playoffs. So guys, guys in this locker room know this. Um, they know that, and, you know, we're just we're really excited to, you know, continue to get back to work. First game since week one without a turnover. He looks great. I love that he said that. What a leader. What a competitor to the end. He believes it, and so will maybe the team and the fans. Mathematically, they're still in it, Kay. Yes. Absolutely. I AFC, anybody that, can get in. I love that we both went Jets because we actually have a Jet coming up. Who do we have? How about that? Hey, your, your boy, are you having a wrap We got out? Mr. Le'Veon Bell, wow. a.k.a. Juice. He's going to be joining us, one of the best backs in the there league. There's a lot going on with the Jets, so we got to ask him some tough questions. Are Kay. you going to spit a little something, something, something? I'll, I'll leave something. that up to Lev. We'll give him the stage. Okay. You know? And we got some behind-the-scenes sound from Lamar Jackson. I thought we'd give you guys um, just that sound. And then can we get a burlesque a little